Hi guys, the level of Tory cope on Friday was reaching epic levels. The party lost two by-elections. There was hope that they could hold on to at least one. The voters don't seem to be interested in Rishi Sunak's five pledges or just don't believe he can achieve them. Conservative voters stayed at home, no doubt sick of a government that's doing nothing for them and just limps from crisis to crisis. Labour had a massive spring in its step and are looking more and more likely to win big next year. So Tory MPs and ministers were sent out to put on a brave face. We've heard already from Greg Hans. Then we had some spin from Marie Caulfield. Have a listen. Maria, you are saying that people are not switching to Keir Starmer. But I mean, just look at the swings. I think we can bring it up in the screen behind us. We are having record, record swings from the Conservative Party to the Labour Party. Look at that. Tamworth. 23.9%, the second biggest swing since the Second World War, from Labour, from the Conservative Party to the Labour Party. Mid Bedfordshire, 20.5% uh, from the Conservative Party to the Labour Party. How can you say Keir Starmer isn't popular? If you look at the actual votes that were cast, actually, in, uh, I think it was Mid Bedfordshire, they actually, uh, fewer people voted for Labour in the by-election than they did at the last general election, where clearly they didn't come out and vote for the Conservatives. So why... Mm. You can't compare the by-election to the general election because there is a different turnout. Yes, fewer people came out to vote for the Labour Party this time than in 2019. But the general election can't be compared to a by-election. People vote for different reasons and it's, of course, a limited uh, campaign. So parties will throw everything at that particular constituency in order to win it. They can't do that on every, to every constituency at the general election. So turnout will be higher, but also the resources spent will be different. While there may be a statistical swing, if you look at the number of people in those constituencies voting for Labour, actually, so, in so, Tamworth, so it was no less doubt, than... No doubt turnout went down 25.5%, 23.9%, the second and sixth biggest swing since the Second World War. And you're calling it a statistical anomaly? Well, no, I'm not saying that at all. Your words? No, I'm not saying that this is a statistical um, uh, a, a fact. But actually, if you look at the number of votes cast for those individuals and for the parties as a whole, Labour actually, there was fewer people went out to vote for Labour um, in uh, mid-Bedfordshire last night than they did in 2019. So no need, so no need for change from your point of no, view? No, absolutely. Rishi is, is, has been very clear about that. And that was his um, you know, big uh, push at the conference speech, that actually, uh, if you want things done differently, then Rishi is the person to do that. If you look at what Labour announced at their party conference, it was more of the same. And Rishi's been very clear. That's why he made some big bold announcements around things like HS2, around net zero, um, and he is changing the way um, that uh, we will do politics. And make he's not doing anything bold. He's taking step backs. He said, we're going to cancel HS2. That's not a bold decision. He said, we're going to roll back um, net zero targets. That's not a bold decision. Bringing them forward would be a bold decision. Rishi Sunak is not acting bo bold. He's acting spineless. Now, I mentioned this in the, in the video short, which is interesting, and it will be a bit of a problem for the Conservatives going forward. So at the next general election, you'll of course have the Reform UK party. And you can see here, they came in third place. Now, if you add up Reform, Britain First and UKIP and, and, can, and hand those votes over to the Conservative, the Conservative party, they would have won. They would have held on to the seat. Now. It's, it's going to be a big problem for the Conservatives at the next general election because Reform UK are going to take away votes. There are a lot of headbangers who voted for Boris Johnson in 2019 and are upset that Brexit hasn't been done or they're being turned on by these culture wars that they believe the Conservatives aren't fully behind. So it's easy for Reform UK to start stealing votes from the Conservatives and split the eventual vote. And this could harm the Conservatives in a number of seats where they're clinging on by the skin of their teeth or skin of their whatever. <laughs> um, so it's going to be very difficult for them going forward. And you're going to have them probably attempting to undermine the threat, try and deal with the threat from Reform UK by moving further to the right. Now, the further they move to the right, the more they're going to help the Labour Party because ordinary people are not far right, not right wing, and they're more likely to vote Labour as an alternative to the Conservatives. But once again, as I've said before, 
the, re the election will be a referendum on the incumbent. Are people happy with the Conservatives at the moment? No, they're not. And they're going to send them packing. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.